Angie. Um, not looking wonderfully professional, but if I don't make this, I will talk myself out of it. So, this is about narcissism and uh, toxic families. Oh, there's me at 16 in the background. <laughs> oh, this is what happens. Ugh. I've just come back from a visit with my mother, and uh, it's such a classic engagement with a narcissist. I just feel as if, uh, like, loads of fiery darts are lodged in me, and, um, uh, tr you know, I would normally just what suppress the feeling of being uh, wounded and dumbfounded and disempowered and criticised and, uh, un mm. let's see what other, ad anyway, I'll just describe what happened, like, uh, I was her carer and then, uh, she, I resigned or, yeah, I resigned and then she was all pathetic and needed me again, so then I reinstated myself and then she did it again and then I thought listen to my friends and don't keep doing that to myself so then I resigned again and said this is it and uh, you know when I'm when when I am her carer she tells me how Gemma wants to be her carer and Emery's so good to her and uh, you know so many people are lining up for the job and then when I'm not her carer then it's like back to all the pathos, so, oh, you know, such a good job you brought round a, you know, an apple turnover and custard, because I was just thinking I must get up and eat something, you know, so that'll do, uh, she has meals on wheels, she has a microwave, um, she has a home help, Monday to Friday, she had, uh, my sister and father visited her this afternoon, and, uh, but no, it's got to be the pathos about if I hadn't turned up with an apple turnover, she doesn't know what she would have done for something to eat. Also, I, I, uh, went round because, um, my son is, is in Florida having surgery, stem cell surgery, and, uh, I thought she'd like an update, so I went round to show her that video of the surgeon giving his update and and uh, to be honest she she was barely interested and just wanted to tell me in great detail about her kidney infection and uh, you know TMI and then wanted to t spend loads of time talking about her blood tests and her transfusions and just whinging about being transferred to Cavan for that and how they only got it up from 9.0 to 9.4 and I said mum you don't even need transfusions under 9 you know and you know Cavan are very amenable to you going in for 24 hours so if you need like two or three units and you you know and it's too long to sit around why don't you ask for a bed and you know, why don't you get your blood test done here and only go to cabin if you need a transfusion. It was like, it was like swimming in pea soup. It, nothing, you know. It, uh, and then there were the digs and then there was the undercurrent of what we weren't talking about and what we weren't saying. So, uh, it, I, I had to raise 25,000, that was just the target give or take to get my son to America and um, we got up to 20 grand and then uh, found a way to borrow the final five with me as guarantor but there was a hitch at the last minute because Jamie had to sign and by then he was already on the plane on the way so mum was uh, with me when I heard about that hitch and so she she emptied her funeral fund and gave the bridging oh dear that was supposed to be a secret but anyway because when she gets me to keep secrets then she releases the info at a select time to a select audience in a select manner 
and I've been honouring the secret, and then she releases it, leaks it, whatever, in a way that makes me look bad, and uh, because it was secret, then therefore I must have, you know, it must be nefarious. So, um, yeah, so when the credit union said, yes, you can borrow up to 11, it's no problem, and I said, we're actually just five short, but they said, you know, blah, blah, blah. So mum said, oh, look, take my five and just give it back to me when Jamie comes back, and I'll just make sure I don't die. But uh, I should title this, Beware Taking Gifts from Narcissists, because you will pay through the nose. Because the minute, the minute I'm entangled or beholden, again, it's, uh, it's brutal. And it's undercurrents, and it reduces me to that childish, like, oh, I have to be nice, because look how nice she's been to me. And, you know, it's so naughty or ungrateful if I feel you know, if I express any emotion at the wounds, the darts getting fired at me, like, in quick succession. So, she said something about my sister had had to get out of her bed to come down for her today, which clearly ha had a postscript, you know, because you don't look after me or something. And I'm like, hold up, Mum, I've had bronchitis for, like, two weeks. I think I got one day in bed. I've just powered through with antibiotics. So, you know, running a guilt trip on me, because Amory's had to get out of bed, you know, with bronchitis. <coughs> you know, nobody forced her to, and lucky her that she, she had a bed, had a few days in bed with bronchitis. I didn't. And then, um, you know, she whinged about Daddy fiddled the whole time he was there, and um, dropped it in the conversation that she knew I'd been to England. I said, oh, somebody told me you were in England. I said, I was, just for two days. And then, zzz, nothing else said about it. And so it's just like... You know, how do I say to her, you know, thank you very much for the week or ten day bridging loan. And by the way, you will be being contacted by the police soon. I'm charged of criminal neglect. And, uh, aiding and abetting abuse, child abuse. Failure to protect, I don't know what the, what the formal charges are, but... 50 years late, like I'm 58, at least 50 years ago, I should have gone to the police, I should... My, sis my sisters and I, and as we did try a few times, we set off a few times, and then, then we would say, "But Daddy will go to jail, and we'll be we'll be put in an orphanage." And I don't know where but somebody must have told us that, and I don't know where we thought Mummy would be. Anyway, but I'm not talking about that here. But what I just wanted to do was verbalise the wounding and the futility of trying to engage with the narcissist and hope that there's a good outcome. There's only a good outcome um, if it suits them. If they haven't got you hooked or entangled in any way, then then my mum can be so charming, like, you know, I had to fight her in the credit union to say, no mum, you don't, she was saying, I'll guarantee the loan, I'll guarantee it. I said, Mum, you don't need to. I've been processed. It's all approved. It's just, Jamie's not here to sign. Oh, well, the, 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 you know. And, uh, by tomorrow, I'll be telling myself, oh, I'm so unreasonable, she's 82, you know, and, you know, it was late to visit, she was in bed, it was like quarter to eight, or past seven or something and um, blah 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 but the truth is it's not about being old oh the, that was the other thing she was very lame so I organised a physical therapist to give her a treatment so now she says she's more lame because he, he, he made it worse he's, he's disabled her <laughs> I said, well, it's very strange because so and so, so and so, you know, so many, so many clients are thrilled with his work, but 
No, the lesson there is don't, you know, even if I stumble upon, it's almost like if I say, Bob, found an amazing naturopath, found an amazing physio, found an amazing chiropractor, it's almost like a joy to her to say, oh no, he's done terrible for me, oh gosh, no, I don't think I'll ever recover. It's almost like another way of punishing me, and, you know, like, and, you know, go, go, yeah, that's, like, <laughs> It's just like you can't win. Like I thought it was so kind. I always turn up with cakes or a treat or something when I go, just to nice manners. So I went and bought apple turnovers and custard and just a little treat. Instead of saying, oh, so kind, thank you. No, it was like, I got the whole drama about, you know, how she would have starved to death if I hadn't turned up at the, you know, last minute with sustenance. Then, you know, none of that. I don't think any of the times that I brought hot cross buns or whatever. You know, if somebody turned up at my house with cakes or biscuits or a treat, I, I, I just make a point because it's such a nice gesture. It's such a kind thing to do to turn up with a little something. Now, she focused on the fact that I didn't wash the dishes afterwards, and I wasn't taking the boat. I suppose another lesson I could learn is not to go out of a sense of duty. I, tr I promised myself I would try and only go when I really want to see her, when I feel like, yes, I'm in good shape, I'll go and see Mum. When I go because I think I should, or I said I would, or it's the day without the home help, or when I go with that sense of duty, I get brutalised. <laughs> So, um, anyway, so that's it, narcissistic mother, and, um, you know, she's probably got a whole other version about, um, why I'm a terrible daughter. <laughs> this is Angie, uh, subscribe, toxic families. God bless.